how it gets turned on. So, so last week we saw how to get uh, started on this. Can you hear me okay? It's a bit low, but it's okay. We can hear clearly. The volume is a little low. Okay, what about now? That's okay. Because it's going to. Uh, have you turned on the recording, Bazafar? When you'll be recording, since this volume is going to into recording as well, so the battery. Okay, I change it around. Can you hear me better? Yeah, yeah. It's better. Yeah. Okay, yeah. recording is on. Okay, so last week we uh, saw how to just uh, start off uh, the scripting part. So I'm putting us all this in here. So to have the good scripting going, you have to declare this. So I'm on a different computer, so let me create a template for a, a new time. Okay, so you have to declare this. It's a minimum. And so, but Zephyr, this will not be considered as a comment, right? Although there's a pound sign in the beginning. Yeah, pound sign and then followed by uh, exclamation. That means it's a shebang. Okay. Okay. okay so, it's so not... when it's going to start reading it, then it will read as a bash file. Okay. Okay, and then uh, you have to change. Uh, the 755 template. So all we're looking for is the execute permission here. Whoever is going to run it, they would need an execute permission. And for you to run the script, you have to type the period slash and then the name of the script. And then it will run run it for you. Okay, so. so for another quick question, uh, if we are saying that pwned and explanation sign has a special meaning to yeah. the interpreter, then what about the second line when we say this is known as C bank? This is definitely a comment, right? No. I'm just in here, I'm just showing you here. This part I'm showing you here is this part is considered as a she bank. I understand that, but this this is going in the script. No, you don't have to type this in there. You okay. You have to type it just in the very first line. That's it. Okay. Okay. And then I'm out of this part. I'm just showing you this and exclamation is for shebang. Okay. Okay. And then if you just have a, a single part here and then with a the comment, I think it goes with any other scripting language. If you put a comment in there, that means it's uh, it's commented out, so it won't be read by the be read by the uh, code or the script and the permission and most of the time you just use 755 in the name of the script and to run the script this is the format here um, period slash script and the script name and i think this is how you do it in linux for uh, python and any other script if you want to run it okay And we see some operators here, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then Boolean. What does Boolean mean? Is either it's true or false. Equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Okay, and um, double pies means it's or, and then double and percent that means and. And then if you type dollar and a question mark, dollar and a question mark, 
will give you error message. It says bash error message 127. If you do ls and if you type this here, bash is zero. That means uh, the uh, there is no exit sign there. There is no error that came out of it. So we'll work on this a little later here. And uh, we built a little script here that reads the number, writes the number, and do a couple things here. Give me two minutes and I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay.
okay i'm back okay so then we saw what is a variable you could anything to anything and then you could recall it how many times or whatever you call it is going to start repeating in here okay all right good. so Okay, so what we could do is uh, let me create CP template and then I'm going to say bash ASH dot SH. Okay, I'm going to go VI bash and hit enter. So in here, I will start putting some codes in here. So if you type echo, Uh, this is Linux source. Okay, and you save and exit. And then if you run bash, it will give you this is a Linux course. So what you could do here is whatever co whatever command you put in here, it will run it for you. Okay, so let's see here if I type clear. And then I hit enter. So what's going to happen is when I run the when the, when I run the command, it's going to clear the screen first. Then it's going to run execute the uh, next line. So why is it doing that? Because the very first command is clear. The second command is echo. And uh, say if you do command s hyphen l, then we'll see what happens here. And so then it's going to run the third command. Okay. Let me check one thing here. Let me see if I could give a space here and see if it's going to run. Okay. So what is happening here is if you have something else in here starting, uh, uh, if you want to run the command, what you have to do is, Let's see here. Okay, so running the command. Okay, I'm going to save and exit. And if I hit enter, it's going to give line number seven is a problem. So why is it a problem here? What you have to do is you have to put this in the, in the code. Yeah, if I let me put this in the code. So let's see if it's going to run. So it's still not running here. Why is it not running here? Because you don't have to use the single code or double code. You have to use the back tick. Back tick, when something is in the back tick, what is happening here is it will execute that as a Okay, so let me make sure what backtick is, um, keyboard. Okay. It's a, uh, I think key under um, tilde. Yeah. 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 This key here, actually it's right next to one. The escape key on my keyboard is a little bit up here because these are F1 keys are hidden here. Okay. Yeah. So this is a back tick and then uh, the, if you do shift tilde, this is a tilde and back tick. So it look like, uh, kind of look like this here, but it's, it's a different, different key. Okay. So this is called back tick. Okay.
okay now you could have more fun here so let's see here i am so now if you want to do this what you have to do is you have to do then you have to go like in quotes here if you want to display uh, exactly what you want you have to say echo and then i just checked who is logged in okay so you could do this here and in here you could type true true command so it will run it for you okay so I just check who is logged in and it's running the who command here if you want to make it much clear okay so it looks a little messy here what I'm trying to say is if you're running the command in the middle of a line this is what you have to do here so normally what I would do is I would just take this here and run this line like this and then uh, take this here and if you doing it on the start of the line you don't have to put uh, the you just have to put ls and l okay the command will run for you and who So this looks much cleaner here. Okay. So you, whenever you want, you could use the echo command as many times as you want. What echo is doing is you could create either if you just type echo, it will give you a nice uh, space before you before you can run the command here. So it looks much cleaner. See, it looks much cleaner here. I just log. I just checked who is logged in and it's uh, it ran command who and then above that uh, running the command it, it ran ls hyphen l okay so th these are just uh, simple easy things that are in here okay so so you run the variable and then uh, let me Okay, so make sure this is tick. Okay. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to say Okay, all right, that's good.
So let's get out of this. And uh, I talked about declaring the variable. What is the variable? And uh, okay, so this is an input variable, and then this is a variable inside the file. Okay, so this is a variable okay so this is a input variable and can be any text except a command okay good And uh, I officially showed you about commenting out, right? What example arithmetic operator? Okay, comment out. Comment out. So when you run this little script here, you are expecting uh, the memory information, but it won't run because this is commented out. out uh, means uh, yeah comment out Okay, so there is next concept called command substitution. Okay, command Okay, so let's see what command substitution is. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a script named substitute Okay, and then I'm going to go in there and uh, what I'm going to do is um, this script will run substitute command.
okay so how is this gonna run so you have to declare this here there is no way around it this is how it is you have to type s h o p t hyphen s and you have to declare expand e x p a n d under underscore aliases a l i a s e s can somebody tell me what is the alias it's a, a re, uh, using another name for the same thing basically uh, can you uh, give me uh, try to give me another uh, example like using uh, i mean in, in messaging we uh, used to have a queue name and we can create another alias queue which is uh, uh, pointing the same queue basically okay exactly exactly so let's see here uh, i officially showed you the uh, showed you what alias is right if i remember it correctly i want to make sure you use this a lot Okay, I think I, I didn't give you very good very good example here. So let's create an alias. Okay, L I A S. You have to give the name alias, and then what you could do is give the name any name you could think of in the world. So let's give the name mother. Okay, and you have to give the equal sign. And then you have to put in a double quotes here. So, Mazra, what is your favorite command? LSFNL. <laughs> Which one? LSFNL. LS. Okay. So, once I hit enter, so in the system, it saved it saved in the alias the name. Now the when you type Mazhar, it will run ls l So Mazhar itself, it created a command now. Okay, so when you type Mazhar, it's going to run that command ls l okay? So we, I think we uh, slightly touched this when we were reading in the beginning commands. At yeah, the time, we, we, we did that, yeah. Now I recall. Yeah, because it's in the document, so it's there. So now what you could do is, how do you know how many aliases are out there? All you have to do is just type alias. And these are all the aliases out there. Okay, so how do you remove the alias? Oh, you just type unalias. Unalias. And let's see, It's I think it's already gone. Uh, so I think you have to run this here, uh, yes, and just hit enter, and then, uh, so maybe what you do is, yes, and you just remove the command, that way it will be gone. No. Okay. Then what you do is you bring your helper Google and see what comes up. Okay, so alias. Uh, 
Oh, okay. So you just type an alias. Same. Hyphen A tells an alias to remove all aliases. Okay. So let's see an alias hyphen A mother. Okay. Mm. Supposed to, no, it's supposed to be an alias. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And then if you type alias, oh, shoot. I removed everything that was alias in there. Okay, let's see. Let me create one. Alias Mazher LS LS hyphen L. So is there an alias hyphen P Mazher? A A L I A S. Okay, this is a bad website here. Let me see. An alias command removes aliases. An alias, for example, if a user had an alias named P, you just have to type an alias, I think. An A L I A S. It's just simple here. An alias mother is gone. So to create an alias, you have to type alias mother equals s hyphen. Okay. So let's see here. Okay, an alias. To remove alias. Okay, that's it. Okay, now that we uh, have this alias. So what else you could do is you could uh, you don't have to have uh, I showed you last time you could run multiple commands simultaneously. Okay, so ls have an and you could date and then uh, semicolon and what else you could type is uh, um, who is logged in and uh, where the version who hyphen r and then you could just save it here. So next time you come in here you must her. So it's going to run all those things for you. Okay, who, who, okay. Okay, so if you run the same command, I think it runs over again. And then what you could do is you could also put nice echo in here so that you could get a space. So first thing in the morning when you come in, you could run this command on your own uh, box and see if it's giving any problems or anything like some important files. You could, some important uh, commands that you want to run on each machine before you start troubleshooting, you could do this for yourself. Okay, so let me, any questions about this? Is it making sense? Yep.
now the um, So you could see the benefits here. You could build up on this and then and then have like a, a bunch of uh, things that you want. You could run it for you. I think you could even have a cat cat command in here. Okay. Uh, what you could use a comma and then uh, semicolon. Then you could do cat. Um, what you're going to type is etcfs tab. Okay, must her. So, so you what you could see is it's it's building building up on on the command you have there. So this is like a command command line script. Let me try something. Uh, fs tab. Okay, so that's uh, echo FS tab. No, you can't do it. I think in here, when you're using it, you can just use the so that it gives you the space, I suppose. You could figure it out and let me know, okay? What you want to do is, if you want to run something like this, you could put it in a script also. It's called command substitution. Okay, so let's go to substitution. You have to declare this line here. Shop, shop t hyphen s command underscore aliases. Okay, so in here, what you could do is, you could declare the alias. Okay, so you declare one alias in here, and then another alias, what you could do is, you could declare again alias, um, Amir, and uh, what is your favorite, you have, I know your favorite is DF, I think you want to work on LVM, okay. Uh, I have another favorite one. Which one is it? It's the RMI phase high, uh, RF flash. Oh my god, do you want to like destroy the system? I'm just kidding. No, don't run this. Here, if I do it, then I, the class will go down. Okay, no. No, actually, just what somebody asked uh, the question yesterday about the DD. So people just making fun around, and somebody told the DD command run on the boot for reaching. Who said that? There was another guy from the India. One guy asked the question that how to run this command. So instead of showing the right command, he showed him the DD, and instead of running on the Different location. He showed him to run it on the boot folder. The guy was new. He ran the command on the boot folder. Okay. Okay. Okay, so echo dffnet and then uh, uh, what else? What is your other favorite? I usually check uh, uptime class. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. 
okay so what's happening is when this runs it actually will create the the, the file alias um, uh, amir here if it doesn't exist it will create one in the system okay okay so Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna declare echo. And then you have to say this command is buzzer. Okay, and then you have to put backtick buzzer. Okay, and then give a space there, and then uh, echo. This command is Amir, and you have to give back tick. Okay, and close it, and then let's run it and see what happens. And how do you run a script? You have to type a period and a slash and the script name and hit enter so it ran that command for you this uh, this command is Amir and then it ran whatever whatever you had in that file here and up here you had so many things uh, on the mother mother alias it ran that here so let's just type alias And uh, oh, okay. So it it didn't create the, it didn't hard coded that um, not the the alias into the system. It's just in the script here. Okay, so let's see if comment out shop T, what will happen here. So what happened here is uh, um, mother command not found this this command is mother it's not found this command so what's happening here is the moment you print this out this this exact uh, declaration then it will start using the alias whenever it sees alias in here it will start using it if you don't don't uh, declare this exactly the way you see it then not worth it I officially showed you the arithmetic right arithmetic operators okay let me just show you how this works
Okay, I'm gonna show you in a simple commands how this is gonna work. So I'm not gonna write anything. So for this, you have to type expression expr. That means you are doing some kind of math. Two plus two. Okay, two plus two give you whatever that uh, calculation is then uh, expr 2 minus 2 okay and then uh, let's do multiply 2 um, 2 expr 2 multiply by 2 okay and then um, expr divided by 2 ok so let me save and exit and uh, run operator so let's see what happens here so operations command not found I think you have to run this slash here. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Hold on for let me let me leave this like this oh let me come back to it a little later okay so next thing i'm going to show you is the redirecting Okay, so let me do redirect that asset. I'm going to change this here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say this is a redirect example. So when it's commented out, what happens? It's, uh, it's going to go is not going to read it so it's just for you to know that those are just the comments or the for the system to know this these are just the comments so it will ignore it so let me type echo this is line one and it will be displayed and I see echo and I put uh, a space there and then uh, what else I could do is uh, echo this line will be sent to dev null which is dev null right so how are you going to do that to send it to dev null we're going to use the redirector greater than sign and slash dev slash null okay all right and then and then uh, let's do um, uh, 
are applying here. Okay, so echo these uh, commands will be will be in file named x file okay so i'm going to say echo um up okay and who Date, uh, who hyphen R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to partially what I'm doing is I'm going to send this line to DevNow. So if if you are expecting some errors, it will it will just discard it and send to DevNow. And then if you are catching some error, some files in here or the, some commands in here. But you want it, you don't want it displayed, but you want it to send it to the uh, another file here. You could do that too. So how how are you gonna do that? Um, so what you would do is echo and then now uh, all you have to do is comment and type up time in there. Okay, so okay, and then uh, who? Day. Who? Hyphen R. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to the file name X file. So this line is being displayed. These commands will be in the file name X file. So let's see here. What happened? Let's go back in here. Uh, so it played the first line, and then we kind of told itself like this line will not be. Uh, this line will be sent to DevNull. What is DevNull is gonna is we will not show you in your output. So it's gonna go into garbage, and then it goes to the second line, and it says this command will be in the file name X file. When you do echo all this, you, this is just an echo command. But you're running the real command here, and you're putting those commands. Output of those commands is going to go into the file. So when I do ls, what should I expect here? There should be a new file in here, right? When I do ls hyphen l, should I what? What would be the name of the file I'm expecting? X file. Yeah, exactly. I hit X file, so the system created the file here because it's it's a part of it's a part in here in this script we have we asked to create it. So let's cat X file here. When we do cat X file, what we should see we should see the commands from those. We should see the commands from those uh, lines. Let's run those commands here. Okay, so, so you could definitely use, you could see how this thing is building up now.
okay and then all these commands new file will be created and output will be saved okay so so this is where this file is at let's uh, what will happen if i run this command again so it won't because the x file will be overwritten the file x file has been overwritten it's just been overwritten right now 1215 but uh, what it is it to go in here this what will happen we will append the same line to the same, uh, x file again yep, exactly very good and then if i do cat x file so it, it will keep the previous previous records in here so run level then it's uh, right and, and it's replicating it in here So the file is getting bigger here so what is the use case use case is gonna be like if you are monitoring something you run this command few times at different time levels you want to get uh, you know how the memory is going up and down you want to run this command you want to run this script like every uh, 10 minutes and you want to gather the information how the system is performing because there are uh, any command you're putting in here, it will run it for you, okay? You know, this is just an example here. It's just telling you the command here. So you could get creative. You could put in any command, any uh, uh, larger command, a complex command, you could put in here and uh, play around with it and then get the results you're looking for. I'm gonna pause for five minutes here. I really want everybody to uh, tell me if they're getting this concept here, because uh, this um, there's a lot of things in here. What if I what if I put down what if I type this here? What's gonna happen now? I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna give a chance to be off okay. I'm a bit quiet. Okay, so it re it's restarting the computer because you told to restart the system. So you got to be careful with some of this uh, restart and uh, shutdown and this command here because it's going to do exactly what you're telling it to do.
okay so the system is back here restart Good, I hope you got uh, the message right uh, how this thing is working. Okay. So let's see here. What we could do is we could pass a variable and then in line it will tell you, tell you, uh, you know, to, to give that information to you. Okay, so let's see. What's happening next is so So what do I mean by this accepting input from a command line? I just have to show it to you before you could you get it, okay? Okay, so let's see here. Uh, uh, CP template and then uh, uh, input one one dot sh then I'm gonna go input okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a note here accept accept input command line okay so what you could do is I'm gonna declare a variable here. Can somebody give a, can somebody suggest a variable name? Okay, let me see um city and state. Okay, so what I'm going to do is equals dollar one. Okay, equals dollar two. Okay, so what I'm going to do is echo city is C I T Y is dollar one. State is okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. No state. State is dollar state because we are calling whatever the input is going to be. When the user is going to see, we'll tell it to uh, put that put that information in here. City dollar. And state dollar. So in here, when it's running the script, it will grab whatever city, whatever the user says, dollar one is going to be city here. Okay, so I'll run it, then I will modify it again so that you can understand better. Okay, and I'm going to run this uh, input. Okay, uh, so how is this going to work? You have to, you have to do this here. Uh, then you have to give Springfield and then space Illinois. So what happens is when I hit enter, it's it will ask you to. We're gonna build up. We're gonna build up on this a uh, uh, lot more here. So 
what is happening here is uh, wherever that the dollar sign is there so when you're writing a script uh, you know what you're doing here at this moment here right, right now you're not writing a script for somebody else so you wrote this script here so these are the input things here springfield and illinois so when you give when you run the script when you, and then you give first field in here this information the script will take it in here and then put it in here dollar one okay and then Illinois, whatever this is, it will grab that information and then replace it here with dollar two. And now we are running the command dollar city is will become whatever city is equal to whatever from the command line is getting. It will put that information here. And similarly for a state, it will put that information here. And then hit enter, it's telling you city is Springfield, state is Illinois. And then if you type uh, one more command in here, can somebody tell me it's going to take the third third input? No, it's not going to take. Okay. So it will actually discard that third information here because it's not there. But if you want to capture the third third information, you could definitely do that. You could continue on. Could, you could continue on accepting in here and then recalling it here, okay? All right. Okay, this is how you run this this uh, particular script. Okay, so let me save this. Okay, I think you got the you got the a message here. What I'm what I'm showing here. Okay, so let's move on. Okay. So. Okay, using command from using command from input. Okay, so let's see here. Um, template, and I'm going to name it command, and I'm going to see command .sh. So what I'm going to do here is. Uh, I'm going to say server one equals dollar one. I'm using one. It does. It doesn't have to be dollar one. It, it could be dollar, and then you could say serve one. Serve one and uh, server two equals dollar serve two. 
okay um, using the command input with script Okay, so what we're gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna say a little this is a ping test okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the command ping okay and then dollar and then I'm gonna say um, server one okay and ping dollar server 2 okay so let's see here if it's gonna work so I'm running it and, and then you no know, this takes two two uh, lines in there so I'm gonna google dot com and zmtech dot com okay let's see what happens Google.com, ZimProtect.com. Okay, let me run this here. Uh, <laughs> provide the variable name should be sir one and sir two. You mentioned the dollar ser one only variable name. doesn't have to be it, it is uh, so l l let me let me remove this here if it's gonna not take this let me do one and two okay and see if it's gonna take it So what happened here is it is working here but let me see it's not stopping in here so what you have to do is I thought over here I thought you could put anything you want but I think apparently it's going to take dollar one two and all the numbers here so you just have to remember it use dollar one dollar two dollar three whatever so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do hyphen hyphen C and one what this is doing is count one time and ping and count and cancel it out one time okay that's what hyphen C is if you go into man for ping you would see that so let's run this okay so it ran it ran the ping command one time and it quit and it ran the ping command for uh, ZM protect and quit okay so what you could do is uh, you could uh, go in here if you want to make it easier when you want to read it you could type echo and then you could type echo mm, this is server 2 Okay, and this is server one. Okay, now you have uh, something uh, 
which is much readable for you. You didn't read the first line echo. Okay, right here. Starting from here, and this is a server one. It read this. It uh, it's giving you the ping information here. Okay, and then this is server two, and this is the ping information is giving you here. So you could see here that and then the more you put in here the better it gets uh, the better it's readable okay uh, let's see here want to stop and ask you guys here because uh, this might get complicated later on. Everybody's getting the concept, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me just put this in here. So Zephyr, wait, instead of uh, the argument on the command line with the period slash script name and the google.com and gameprotect.com, can you mention those two uh, lines in the script, wait, inside the script? Wait, what? But if you run the inside the script, it will be static, right? You, you're just stuck with it. So... You see what else can you do in here you just don't have to type this in here right what you could do is uh, uh, what you could do is you could do cnn.com and uh, bbc.com there you go so this script is dynamic whatever you want to put it will take it from there. All right, got it. So if you wanted to make a stick, then we have to mention, we can mention in the file, right? In the script file. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yeah, we'll, we'll see that a little later here. I will show you a little later um, how those things would work. Matter of fact, uh, let me do that right now.
Okay, so let's see here. Uh, I I want to show you how to read the file. But I'm debating uh, is it the right time to do this. Uh, Okay, I think I have to do that when, when I showed you the while loop. Okay, alright, so I'm gonna show you how to use the if, if, if statement here, okay? So, using it uh, command from input here uh, server one dollar one user okay so let me clear this CP uh, template and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, um, if statement. Okay, I'm going to do vi if statement. So I'm going to say this is a if statement. Okay, so what I was going to do is uh, I'm going to say echo um, enter a number. Okay, so I'm going to do is echo and then uh, I'm going to display this a line in here and then I'm going to give some space all the all these are not new so far for you guys and then uh, what I'm going to do is enter a number um, between 1 and 5 okay and I'm gonna say read num1 okay we have we have we have used this read command okay 
here when we are using the calculator read command is this will give you at the prompt this will enter this at the prompt here in the previous example you could have definitely used the read command here instead of uh, writing this server one and input and all this you could have you could have write any script and says read read and then it says uh, put number one or server one and server two or whatever so you i would definitely recommend to play around with this here okay okay read number one so what's going to happen is you're going to write the if statement if okay and then uh, we're going to use the square bracket if dollar num one equal to three okay here here this is where we're going to use the boolean here but i talked to you about this here how this boolean works true or false this is what it means boolean so if i am doing equal sign you have to use equal to double equal to that means it's going to give the comparison here then what are you going to do is then is a, also a part of a command in here then you should go echo you are uh, you gave correct answer okay so you open the if command close the if command you have to type i okay you have to open if and then uh, put in uh, the boolean or put in uh, whatever you are uh, doing the comparison then if then okay let's see how this is going to work let me uh, let me show you then uh, we could come back in here again okay so what you could do is uh, run this command here if statement you run this it's telling you enter a number between 1 and 5 so i push 3 and you says it gave it gave the answer here but if i push 1 what will happen here so it's just editing out it's not giving you any information here but you could you could tell the in here how you're gonna handle it okay let's see here This is a simple statement here. Simple if statement. Okay, right now, right now what we are dealing with is we are dealing only with if the value is correct. If the value is not correct, we are not dealing with that yet. Here, we will deal with that in the next uh, next thing I'm going to show you here. Okay. Uh, we got 10 more minutes. Okay, I think I should stop here, but let me show you one other thing here. So what you could do is, if we used equal, right, to show this here, what else you could do is you could use EQ. EQ is also valid here. So when we go up and take a look at our uh, Boolean operators, you could do um, eq or equal to it means equal and e r uh, exclamation and equal sign that means it's not equal to okay so what you do is hyphen hyphen eq3 
enter the number three, that means you give a correct answer here. See, now you see we're not using a special character. We're using hyphen EQ. That means equal to its built-in. It's, it's one of those built-in operators for the bash script here. So, and I'm going to give number two. So it's not doing anything. It's not giving you the correct answer here. Okay, I type number three. That means it matched. It matched what we have put in in here, and it's giving us the. And it's giving us the correct reply. Okay, so next week, what I'm going to do is if, then, else statement. If this is true, what if the if then else is if this is true, do this. If this is not true, if something else is true, do that. So you could have you could write a lot of lot of uh, script or a lot of lines of script into the one script here. Okay, so it will be interesting next week here. Uh, so tomorrow officially there is no class, and then we'll meet uh, next Saturday. Then uh, next Saturday is going to be a, a class there, and next to Sunday is going to be class there. Okay. Uh, don't quote me on Sunday. I'll decide uh, on Saturday if there's going to be class on the Sunday the 18th. But right now there is no class as of tomorrow. 11. Okay. Anybody? Any questions? Nope. All right, guys, this is very important that you keep up with the scripting here because uh, as part of this admin, uh, you should be able to write some scripts here. And the in, I'm going to give you all the examples here. And all you have to do is just build up on that. Okay. If no questions, then uh, I'm going to stop here, and uh, officially tomorrow there is no class. And, um, so, so quick, is, uh, quick question, though. Uh, related to uh, scripting uh, version control, is there any tool which is used, like in application, 